Hello everyone, my name is Brett Keen, and today I want to talk about a concept called altruism, one of the most powerful elements and essence of humanity. A selfless act done with no gain towards oneself. Myself and a fellow by the name of Church of Dave was talking about morals and ethics today in Stick M. And I asked him what he would consider an act of altruism. And he said, a soldier diving on a grenade to protect the rest of the group, although it gains him nothing except for death, the end of his existence, he still has given himself to save others. Well, I did a little bit of looking into Wikipedia's version of altruism, and it says, Altruism is a selfless concern for the welfare of others. It is traditional virtue in many cultures and central to many religious traditions. This idea was often described as the golden rule of ethics. Some philosophies, such as objecticism, argue that altruism is a moral vice. Altruism is the opposite of selfishness. Altruism can be distinguished from a feeling of loyalty and duty. Altruism focuses on motivation to help others or a want to do without reward, while duty focuses on a moral obligation towards a specific individual, for example, God, a king, a specific organization, for example, a government, or an abstract concept, for example, patriotism. Some individuals may feel both altruism and duty, while others may not. Pure altruism is giving without regard to reward or the benefits of recognition. My argument in all of this is that there is absolutely no way for any of the classic versions of God, whether it be the Muslim religion, whether it be Christianity or Judaism, there is no way that any of their gods could have this essence or this incredible concept that humanity possesses called altruism because the gods always expect for us to give back for what they have claimed to have given or at least what man allegedly claims that they want. I have never been able for the life of me be able to understand why it is that religious people even believe that what Jesus did was some kind of sacrifice. The Christ figure from the moment he was born before he even existed knew that he would come to the earth, he would allegedly die, and then he would float right back up into heaven and to his million dollar mansion with his roads made out of gold. He wouldn't suffer at all. Now the Christian may claim that God made himself human for a while in order for himself to be able to understand and identify with man and be able to manifest himself in a way where he could feel pain. I argue that that is impossible. It is impossible because if what Christians say is true that the universe cannot function or exist without a God present, then it would be impossible for God to change or turn off his powers for 33 years just so he can sign his own death warrant to save us from the sin that he created. There is no way for a God to be able to have the element called altruism. Because the God of the Bible, as well as the Quran, expects deeds and works and expects from us all the time. In fact, the gods of these religious tomes expect more from us than what itself can do. Let me give you an example. A god cannot possibly understand what faith even is. So why would a god ask us to have faith? 
and you're probably saying to yourself, what do you mean? What do you mean, Brett, God can't have faith? Because if God is omnipotent, omnipresent, all-knowing, it is unbelievably impossible for it to be able to have any ounce of hope. If you know what is going to happen from A to B to C, there is no position in any of this, whether you're outside of time or space or not, whatever religious people try to make up about God. The problem is, is that the knowledge steps in the way of the concept of hope. If I know that Bob from New York will be born a male with a three inch penis and that he will die at 33 years old from being hit by a banana truck. And I know every choice he'll make and every single thing about him all throughout his life. There is no way that I can have hope for Bob. I know before Bob was even molded or created by me how Bob's life would end up. It would not be necessary, nor would it be even likely to suggest that I would have hope for Bob when I've already got Bob's life set out for him. From beginning to end, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and end. I know all things and every hair on his head is what the God of the Bible claims. A God cannot have faith. Faith is a lack. Faith is to hope. A God cannot have hope. A God is without hope. It is hopeless. A God cannot do a selfless act because according to the Bible and according to the Quran, all things that God does is within his will and does it for himself. Even in the Jewish Torah, even in the Bible, the God describes itself as a jealous God and that it respects no person. It does not respect anyone. It clearly says, let me repeat this, that he is not a respecter of anyone. So anytime this God decides that it's going to do something or has already decided for itself what it is going to do, it does it so it can gain followers and worshipers and believers and that's it. And it's kind of a stupid situation anyway because the God already knows who's going to believe in it, who's going to disbelieve in it, because the God created those people that way. So there is no way for a God to have altruism. A Christian may compare the idea of a soldier dying on a grenade to protect other soldiers with the concept of Jesus dying on a cross to protect us or save us. The problem is, is they would have to actually use the analogy that the soldier created the very fucking bomb that it dived on to protect the very people that it put in the situation in the first place. You see, if God is the act of the soldier, he is also the one who created the fucking bomb and the people, the environment, and the situation, and the moment that this happens, that it, the God chooses to make this decision. And a God can't choose to make a decision anyway or change its mind, because if a God is all-knowing, it does not need to think. It does not need to rationalize or use any kind of logic to do something, because it already knows beforehand. So a God cannot ponder or accumulate or learn more or expand its horizons. So folks, this has been Brett Keen talking about the God without hope, without altruism. Thank you.